Today's guest is Justin Alexander Ultar. Um, he goes by Xander, and he is my body worker out here on the big island of Hawaii. And let me just tell you a little bit about Xander. So when I came to visit the big island, before I even ever knew I was going to be moving here, I was at an ecstatic dance and there was a guy on the side doing massages. Okay. And normally when I'm at events like that, I don't know. I just, I don't, I'm like, I'm here for the dance. I'm just going to dance. And my intuition was just like, go do that. Go. It was like, there was a spotlight beaming down. It was like, do that, do that. I like could not let it go. I was like, okay, fine. So I go over, do it. And it, I mean, within a couple minutes, I was like, what is this? Like, this is like, I don't know. I was like, are, are you a psychic or <laughs> what is going on? Like, this is something else other than just a massage, you know? And when I found out that I was going to move here, it was like, yay. <laughs> Cause I was like asking him, I'm like, do you teach other people your method? Like, wow. You know, and so I've been going to him regularly since I've been out here and I, I just honestly feel so lucky. Like he is so incredibly good, like unbelievably good and has gotten my body feeling so good. And so, you know, through getting to know him um, as my, you know, quote unquote massage therapist, or like, as I, I like to say, surgeon through skin, you know, just really getting my body like operating way better. Um, one of our many conversations has landed around uh, breast augmentation. And um, he's really educated me even deeper about that for myself. I do have breast implants. I got them way before I became a trainer or went on my whole, you know, spiritual awakening and um, really opened my eyes to getting to like thinking about that more deeply and how it is impacting not only women in general who have them, but specifically if they're resistance training and really pushing the edge of their biomechanics and musculature, it exacerbates a lot of the issues that can happen with breast implants. So the I asked him to come on the show and talk about this, specifically mostly because he you'll hear when he starts like he's <laughs> had a unique professional journey that really uh, opened his eyes to what an issue this can be for women and what happens in their posture and their shoulders and their, you know, thoracic, which is like the, you know, mid back area and all of that. So we're going to get into all that. Um, I, my purpose in doing this episode is, um, just providing more food for thought for women who either already have breast implants or maybe are considering getting them. I'm not making any sort of statements about like whether women should or shouldn't or anything like that. I'm not getting into breast implant illness and I'm not getting into any of that. This is purely biomechanics. What happens in your biomechanics, things to look out for, things that may already be going on with you if you have them and what you can do to help. That's it. So um, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Here is Justin Alexander Ulcher. Okay, guys, I'm here with Xander, my incredible body worker, massage therapist, surgeon through skin. <laughs> <laughs> We're here in Kalapana on the Big Island, Hawaii. And um, I asked Xander to come on and talk about the impact of rust augmentation on our biomechanics. And specifically because um, when you look into this, most of the information that you find is like, based on women who aren't weight training, first of all. So you add weight training to the mix and everything's gonna get exacerbated. Uh, second of all, because I have dealt with everything that we're gonna talk about today and it's been a bitch. I don't know how else to say it. It has, you know, I got breast implants before I knew anything, before I was a trainer, before I went through like my whole healing journey, any of it. And I got all these injuries and postural issues. And so, um, you were telling me, I hope you don't, do you mind sharing about like how you got a lot of experience? <laughs> learning about oh, of course. So yes. Um, I started as a personal trainer myself. Uh, I think it was around 2001. And by 2003, I got into massage therapy and, and the very first place they brought me or the very first place I, I found that was like calling me was a strip club. So <laughs> exotic dancers was how my massage career began. <laughs> So I got to see all of these things that you're describing, you know, all these women who um, both natural and augmented um, are all having these similar issues with their body, the, the shoulders, the neck, you know, mi even mid back, um, not to mention anything going around the, up in the skull. Like these are all 
common re repetitious things. So I just started to notice what was going on. And after asking them questions about their breast implants, like what happened? What did they do? Like, I'm curious, what, mm -hmm. like, how did this happen? And then as I learned more, I'm like, well, of course, now all this makes sense. It's uh, in short, it's just like the, your shoulders themselves are trying to come together in front of you. And that's not clearly, that's not how we're talking to each other or engaging in, in general. That's the key component, like the, the singular thing that I've noticed that in this respect of, you know, if you get breast implants, what it's going to do is it's going to just pull your whole body forward. So like, I know this looks kind of funny, but this is pretty much how we then ex get to exist is with our arms out here. We can't like actually move them because the muscles that open you up are no longer functioning. You know, so breathing, for example, becomes restricted. So now you can't breathe. So how important is breathing? <laughs> oh, no, you don't need that for very long. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, um, and, and I really enjoyed the article that you shared with me uh, from a doctor who had really just like cut and dry, literally, where this is how the body is cut up mm -hmm. and how we disassemble part of your structure to be able to fit this thing in your body. And, um, and now it's like, okay, if that happens, what are all the things that are, are now compensating for that impact, for that um, trauma? Right. It's Definitely. a trauma. Like, all surgery is trauma, period. Right. There's no getting around it. Well, and not to mention, now there's something under the muscle stretching it. Correct. On top of the trauma. It's not Correct. just like a regular surgery. It's a deforming. It's a right. deforming surgery. It, uh, I, I even describe it as uh, conditioning. So now you're like, you're actually reconditioning how your shoulders yeah. and rib cage work. Right. So like my act of breathing, the, the way I hold my phone, even something as simple as eating or driving is now being reconditioned because there's there's no more. Right. There's no more of this. Right. You know, it's it's frozen and right. stuck. And now we have to learn how to function from this rigid place. Mm. Um, I'm going to get in the nitty gritty a little bit yeah. because, you know, as someone who's had this like basically what you're told one is you definitely want under the muscle because otherwise it's going to look really fake and you're just going to have these like things under your skin that are going to be really visible so that's pretty much like what most people do and then the only sort of information that I got in terms of recovery was one like the whole like rest and all like mm -hmm. all that but then the only other tip I guess advice I was given was mm -hmm. You know, it's okay if you do, uh, like, push-ups and things like that, but you probably don't want to, like, do a ton of chest work. <laughs> and you know why? The reason why was because it can push your implants apart and then they won't look as good. Oh, my goodness. That's right. Well, <laughs> And that was it. So, so let's, let's start there. Let's start there. <laughs> let's start there. Like, what can you do? Like, in the simplest fact, you know, you've got this hard thing in your body regardless of what happens. Something that I was actually taught by the uh, exotic dancers and some other doctors that I've asked questions is you literally just massage your breasts in the first two years of your implants to massage each one up to five minutes a okay, day. I think so I that's, was told to do that. Right, exactly. So that's <laughs> 10 minutes of your time just massaging this throughout the day. Um, I say at least once up to twice every single day for two years. Um, but then as you've experienced in, in, in our massages as well, there's all of this stuff around the, the muscular, you know, the actual breast implant. So like the rib cage up in here, just giving it touch, massaging it of any kind mm -hmm. will help the circulation because that's ultimately where any healing happens is simply through circulation. So if you're encouraging all of that, then you'll, you may notice it'll be easier to actually open your body. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to exercise, um, just focus on stretching. You know, you're going to, just like I said with conditioning, mm -hmm. immediately you're going to feel restricted. You can't really move your body. And if you're already massaging and increasing your uh, circulation, then now we get to increase range of motion. All right. All right. And if you don't have your original range of motion back, right. then don't do any resistance training, right. even your own body weight. Right. So like push-ups or anything. Right. Because at that point, there's no stability to, this, to the joints. Mm -hmm. Um, and even then, I'll even instruct a lot of my clients, just don't even push anymore. You know, just just pull things. Because if you can get used to getting your structure back into this elevated and open, you know, so you can actually breathe and then protect your shoulder. Because that's where a lot of shoulder injuries come from is, is this general position. And then I try right. to do things and up, 
Right. I don't have a rotator cuff anymore. Right. Which <laughs> happens to pretty much everybody if you're not on top of your posture anyway, because exactly. it's normal for humans to go like this. Correct. You know, it's normal to round your shoulders. You know, you got your and, phone, yeah. you got your driving, but, even heating. But now you have this traumatic injury here that's it's going to really cause you to go into that shortened yes. place. Very exactly. And I had, like, now that I've been diving into this, I had, all, like, it was like I was just like textbook, textbook, yeah. right? Like, yeah. pretty soon, quickly dislocated a rib and a, you know, and it, like, that shouldn't have happened and developed all these shoulder injur- injuries in my dominant arm, which is what I've been reading is very common, <laughs> right? Had to go through this huge thing with posture. And I still, it's like a constant, like, having to stretch, having to make sure things are turning on, having to get body work. So mm-hmm. I wanted to open this up because um, I, I'm i not trying to, I'm not going into breast implant illness. I'm not going into like ethics and right or wrong and women and body issues and all of that. I'm Self-care. simply here, if you have breast implants, <laughs> this is like stuff or like you're going to do it. This is stuff that I don't see get talked about, like, right. hardly ever. It's basically like you hear, like, oh, you're fine. Like, it's totally fine. No worries. But if you're going to be resistance training, like, let, let's get into a little bit of the nitty-gritty, like, yeah. right? Like, you talked about, like, some thoracic issues in the neck. So can you take us through some of a little deeper into some of the issues that you see there? Uh, I mean, really, it's um, nerve impingement, I guess, would be the best word to describe it. Um, because again, with this trauma and, um, an over tensioning of the front of the body, everything behind you then has to compensate for that. So, I mean, if you could imagine never being able to bend your elbows ever again, and just go about your life for that for a little while, that's in essence, the leverage that is happening on your spine Mm -hmm. is that it's just pulling everything so off center Mm -hmm. that it, um, that all those muscles back there. Um, are just going to seize up and hold, you know, and, and then not, then that's all they got because the tension that's played. The thing about the body is if it does that for a while, it'll just say, okay, I'm going to stay that way and it'll harden mm-hmm. and then it won't move anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's the whole process of unraveling all that scar tissue just so you can have just general motion. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to get into, you know, chronic migraines, frozen shoulder. Um, again, the structure itself doesn't move. Right. So as far as uh, between the shoulder blades, we're back to the same thing. Everything in the body is opposites. If you have any experience in your body you don't like, the cause is on the other side. So all this stuff back here, you're like, oh, it's right between my shoulder blades. It's because the heart is being com- compressed, you know, and just simply trying to open that up, you're going to immediately notice, oh, this is hard and uncomfortable, but the pain's gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's why I use the word nerve impingement, because as soon as the the structure is lined up, then everything is, I mean, that's the point. Everything works well. That's why we have the word posture to identify mm-hmm. when everything's in place. Right. You know, otherwise we wouldn't identify like this is the uh, um, ideal, mm-hmm. uh, whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when you first were working on me, you were like, oh, I just, just when you get home, just take your peck yeah, and just, and just lift it just pull Pull. (laughs) and and this is an area that i kind of wanted to address like um especially since i've been working with you i've noticed more and more because we've been working on this but like i mean think about it like my whole pec major right Mm -hmm. here is like stretched out to its max right and has had trauma uh it i in that article i sent you i read that i don't know if this is true with all surgeons okay so don't get up in arms if you do that. But the article I read said that they don't they don't reattach at the bottom of it like completely right. to make room for that. So like by your ribs on the bottom of your pec, it's not even like completely attached back. Like it's kind of this loose attachment. So then, OK, so what's going to happen when you're doing chest work? Mm-hmm. You're going to push it all up into this clavicular portion of your right. pec because it's going to be the least traumatized right. part of the pec. I mean, at best, you know, <laughs> probably most people are going to get some really jacked front delts and, you know. Right. Well, that's the kind of the point is, minor. is because there's nothing to stabilize any depression of the scapula to actually activate the full use of the pec. Right. If basically the whole bottom half doesn't function, so the right. whole system lifts. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, so it, let's even go back to that. Like, yeah, the pec major is just pulled back to its max when it comes to muscles. It can contract so much and it can stretch so far. Once you've gone, it, there's no in between. So if you're already maxed out and you're right. trying to do your chest workout, it's it it's 
It's like, I got nothing. Right. It's not actually doing the work. You're then stressing out usually your rotator cuff itself and, uh, and ter uh, tertial muscles like shoulders and triceps, uh -huh. all the things that are, um, that whose job is to actually hold everything together yeah. is now doing the motion. Yeah. Because it's not held together. Right. So since I've been working with you more and been paying more attention to this, I've definitely noticed like as I'm in posture more, like a big focus on it, like my clavicular pec right here is jacked. Yes. Like it's like this, like if I didn't have this on, you'd be able to see it more. It's just like this, like when I'm in posture, it's like, wow, clavicular pec. <laughs> this is just meaning the top portion of your pec. So it comes kind of clavicle off the sternum and then kind of off the rib. So it makes that kind of like connection like this, right? So all of this is like stretched out, traumatized. So this has been taking over. Um, and on top of that, I mean, already people have a hard time activating pecs in general. When I take people through like a dumbbell bench press, they're usually kind of all up here in their shoulders, you know. And so already that can be a tricky spot to activate. But when you have had this type of trauma, I still do do some chest work. It's more, it feels more like experimental. <laughs> like, can I, can I, and I, and I can, but it's, I, I don't do it often. People are always like, how come you don't share more chest workouts? I'm like, I don't really do them that often. And two, I, um, I'm very, very like light and careful. And I'm really just trying to see if I can feel that activate, right? right? Which I would really recommend yes. versus like just trying to, you know, win some bench press championship. Right. You're going to compensate like crazy. Oh, absolutely. And the other thing I've noticed is like definitely what you're talking about. Scapular stability has mm -hmm. been like a bitch since this, well, you know? That's what I'm hearing is is already by by having that mindset, your attention is not just on the motion you're trying to make, but on the stability of the joint itself. Right. And that's ultimately the secret to healthy exercise and the longevity of the body, just as we age in general. Right. Uh, is if we can learn how to keep that, that shoulder in place and you're like, oh, wait a minute, I can feel the activation of these muscles and there's no uh, instability of the structure itself. Right. Right. So um, only the joints are moving, not the bones, if that makes sense. Yeah. And as your attention is moving on that, you've probably already, now you can actually feel the muscle activating yeah. because it's stabilized. Right. It's what the, the reason why we have the pain between the shoulder blades is because it wants to be in that position and hold you stable. It's its job. Right. You know, that's, that's, right. that's what it's been wanting to do. So until you're in posture, then, then you're never going to get the activation that you described. Yeah. So... I, I'm enjoying the way you've just you've you've framed that because um, it's not about the activity; it's about the awareness of why you're doing it, how it feels. It's your experience, not the result. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then, okay, so let's go back to well. First of all, body work. So people will ask me all the time, like, "Oh, I have the, I have a bad shoulder. What exercises can I do?" And I'm like, mm, "Step number one is you need to get into a." skilled wizard body worker <laughs> and sometimes it's a little hard for me to find the words i'm like um you, maybe somebody in a chiropractor or physical therapy office they they kind of like are like i'm a massage therapist but i'm really more a physical therapy or i'm a body worker you know like so, like what you do how i think that's really important because you help remove roadblocks yes right like uh, very often there's these like neurological neuromuscular roadblocks that until that starts getting released like it's hard for me to get that I can stretch which we'll get to next but at first I'm wondering if you could do your best to explain to someone if they don't live here on the big island of Hawaii and can work with you how do they find someone like you to help them with all this like what would you recommend oh goodness oh uh, well see that's the word recommend personally <sighs> um I've never advertised all right. So the only way anyone would yeah. hear about me is through recommendation. Yeah. So that would be like the first pop up in my mind. Nice. Ultimately, it's just as you said, usually what I recommend is there's um, there's no one practice that's going to solve any of your issues. That's all right. Right. I'm a personal trainer. I do massage therapy. I have the, per you know, the, the physical therapy, some chiropractic knowledge. Right. I've got yoga. There's like a uh, whole broad scope of all the things that I've kind of crammed into this. Like, this is how your body works. <laughs> right. you know try to simplify it for it but if we're trying to if you're really trying to look for that then you might have to go to multiple people just like yes. what you described of like i'm gonna have to ask my personal trainer some questions right. i'm gonna have to go to a, to a massage therapist ask them for questions 
go to a chiropractor, ask them for questions. Actually, that triad right there yeah. is pretty effective at taking care of most things. I've seen scoliosis straighten out permanently from that. Now, it takes right. a lot of time and, and attention and clearly money for all that service. Right. But if you have those resources, like I said, I've witnessed it. I've, I've been the yeah. one. I've seen how, it, how they started and then I've seen how they ended. And they told me what they did, including following the things that I've shared yeah. um, here today. And, um, and that would probably be the best way. If you happen to have the luck of finding someone who's, who's actually committed themselves to the craft of the human right. anatomy to the point where they have brought in many modalities and, and, right. and, and knowledges into, uh, into an understanding of how they use their own body, mm -hmm. that would be the, that's usually how I look at it is, I, um, it, it, I don't care how good people say you are. I'm looking at how you use your body. Yeah. Because that is going to relate how you treat mine. Totally. <laughs> totally. So if anything, um, that would be the, uh, the, totally. the next step is look at people, watch them, like pay right. close attention. And if you feel drawn, you're like, so, I'm like, I really like how that, just like the shape, I'm not finding myself attractive, but like there's something going on here that mm -hmm. I want in my experience. Right. You know, that's probably someone that you can talk to and that. get some of their wisdom. I love that. I love that. Okay. Thank you. And then let's go into stretching, right? Yeah. You mentioned stretching. Now, a lot of people will be listening on audio. So if you could kind of describe, but like, what yeah. do you recommend in terms of somebody who they're hearing this, they have breast, oh. let's say they've had breast implants for like seven years or something and they're hearing right. this. What would you recommend for stretching? Well, the first recommendation I give everyone for stretching is it has nothing to do with how far you move has everything to do with what you feel. Yeah. So if you're feeling a tension, if you're feeling a pull, if it's uncomfortable, then, you know, subside a little bit. So that way you just feel enough for, to feel something. Right. Some awareness. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's not about, am I doing it right? Am I in right. the right position? Your body has so many variable ways to move and they all have different sensations. Yeah. Pick one and see how it feels. Right. You know, and if it's uncomfortable in some degree, it probably needs more of your attention. Yeah. So, and that just means slow and, you know, it's slow and gentle. Again, the sensations we have in our body are no different than our emotional process. Mm -hmm. So be gentle with yourself. Move yeah. slowly. Don't try to push or force or pressure for any reason mm -hmm. because, you know, this is the relationship that you have with yourself. And, yeah. um, and that would be, you know, that's it. Slow down and feel. Mm -hmm. And if it's uncomfortable, like I said it, in the beginning... If you don't have full range of motion to before the surgery, then don't exert yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you're just, and you'll notice, just trying to move itself will create stretching. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, like, go ahead, try to reach up. I can't. Well, do you feel anything? Yes. Focus on the feeling. Again, the position, the motion, none of that actually matters. All that matters is the feeling that you get. Um, and I guess for, uh, for a little extra tidbit is the secret of the body, again, is everything is opposites. So, for example, if you just try to reach your arms opposite of each other, you know, laterally, side to side, as if your hands are getting further away. As we've talked again, not up over your shoulders. I usually like to say if your elbows can be somewhere between your belly button and your nipples. So that's pretty low. Mm -hmm. You know, your hands are more towards your hips, down at your hips at that mm -hmm. point. But by in that position, just the simple act of reaching your arms out to the side away from each other, mm -hmm. um, you'll get a sensation. Yeah. And all of your stretches have that same principle. If you put your attention in any opposite direction, you're going to create a sensation in your body. And if you follow that sensation and listen to it and go as deep and hard as you want or as soft and gentle as you need, you get the relief and healing that, you, that your body is asking for. Because all it wants is your attention. Yeah. <laughs> it has so much to say. Yes. And they just listen and respect and, and are curious about it. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've really enjoyed is just using a Swiss ball, like the big exercise ball and just oh, like yeah. kind of gently just star fishing on just yeah. laying there and then kind of rotating my hands mm -hmm. around going into a little bit more external rotation, you know, just, but it is a discovery. Exactly. Right? I remember growing up, you know, when they're like, okay, stretch like this. And I'm like looking around. I'm like, is, am I supposed to be feeling scared? Right, exactly. Yeah. I, I could do this. <laughs> right. You know, like... You're looking for the right way to do it and you don't feel anything. And then hopefully you mature out of that and you learn like, oh, I can just like literally could do this. And be like, oh, yeah. yeah. It feels good. It feels right. good. And that's really the whole point is through that through that practice of stabilizing and ex and extending, you know, yeah. Like you said, if you're bending over and you're trying to keep your shoulders in place and you're just rotating your arms 
in, you know, in different directions, you'll get a different sensation. And then keeping that position and moving your head. Yeah. Because that's the thing is like under your scapula and your rib cage, across your rib cage, up your chest, um, up your clavicle, around your neck, down your shoulders, across your shoulders, all of that's connected. Basically everything above your nipple, nipples to your nose is one piece. <laughs> it's one solid piece. So as you are moving in any combination that you can explore, yeah. you're going to find something, you're going to find a restriction, mm -hmm. which will probably cause some pain and discomfort. Mm -hmm. But then that's where the slowing down and, and finding where the, where is the relief? Okay. That hurts. All right. Mm -hmm. Where is the relief? You know, just like what we talked about posture. Oh, this is really uncomfortable. Hold this exaggerated position. It's very difficult. And it's actually exhausting to do this. Oh, wait, but I'm not hurting. Yeah. So again, what are you paying attention to? Right. Are we focusing on how much it hurts or where, how much this feels good? Mm -hmm. So when you're stretching, if you, if it hurts, don't lean into the hurt. Right. Find a spot that actually is relieving. Right. That sense of relief that. of they're just like, oh, this is actually enjoyable. You know, it's not comfortable, but it's enjoyable. Wow, I'm really weird now. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, totally, because it's I, not pain anymore. It's relief. It's kind of, it, I hear you 100% because it reminds me of, like, you do see it a lot with stretching. It's like, oh, yeah, and the people yeah. like, oh, like, like, <laughs> it, and you're like, stop, what do you do? You know, and it is kind of that program and society of, like, one, like, uh, make it happen fast, right? Like, I'm going to get my results, like, immediately. <sighs> and then, two, I'm going, I need to, like, hurt myself to be better i need to like punish okay. myself to give it it's a little okay. bit of that energy you know? okay let's wow <laughs> all right um let's let's go to that first one um remind me what that was again um uh what did i say um Four. oh instant results instant results all right oh yes that was one of my favorites <laughs> um the hurrier you go the behinder you get <laughs> nice. the slower you move the faster you arrive that's one of my favorite little sayings because in my stretching experience, I get the same. If I'm uncomfortable, if I'm in pain and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to be in pain. Please help me get out of pain. I'm moving in all kinds of directions. I just don't want to hurt anymore. You know, it, it, it's still hurting. But the moment I just like slow down and stop and just like pause and surrender, yeah. suddenly there's this like this, oh, oh, you know, nice. and, and then in mere moments, like literally in less than a minute, I'll be like, oh, I'm better. It took me five minutes to realize it took me less than a minute to feel better. Nice. <laughs> so nice. it's that same essence of like the yeah. earlier you go, the behinder you get, you know, the slower you move, the faster you arrive. Right. That, that's sort of my own addition to that. But the point is, is that cycle is going to be present for what you're describing. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to the second yeah. one because that was a like big. It has to suck. <laughs> and it has to get, getting healthier has to suck. It's okay. like a broad program out there. One of my <laughs> favorite pieces of advice is: okay, you want to you want to be in shape. You want to be a good, you know, buff, whatever. F fill in your exercise dream, imaginatory, you know, godly structure, whatever you want. Um, there is one thing that's gonna be more valuable to reaching that result than any activity that you do, and that's your rest yeah. of not doing it. Because if you're, because that's the point of stretching. The reason why we found the relief in the stretching is because circulation is now going somewhere that it wasn't, right. which is why it relieved. Right. So if, you know, the thing about exercise is if you push yourself to a point of pain, there's usually inflammation, circulation has then, you know, minimized, if not stopped entirely. You know, because now there's injury, mm -hmm. you know, and you're like, oh, but again, like now I come back stronger, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then how long does it take to recover from right. it? So right. if it takes you two right. days to recover from what you did three days ago. Right. You so you can. Note to self, you pushed a little too hard Right, there. exactly. You don't have to go that hard. Right. All right. It is, you can legitimately do exercise <laughs> every single day without right. rest if you limit yourself. My basic right. fundamental is 20 minutes. Right. That's all I do. Right. If that, because I've, I've got much, I've got a very active lifestyle. So it's uh -huh. like, do I need to do this? Right. I just lifted a tractor today. Right. You know? <laughs> just hit some intensity and you're good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. But that's the point is at some point you could make life itself an exercise through the postural awareness and stretching um, acknowledgements just by using your body throughout the day. Um, and I guess that's the best answer that I can give for that second part of it. You don't need to hurt yourself because this is your life. You know, if you, <laughs> how long do you want to live it? Um, are you actually interested in enjoying it? 
uh, we can show you how to do bulk more. Yeah. You know, like you can have more enjoyment and live longer the whole with thing, less pain. Right. The, the healthy uh, <laughs> endeavors can be totally enjoyable and the re recovery and all of it can be enjoyable. Exactly. <laughs> um, the, it's just it's the same process uh, for what we've been talking about with the with the breast implants. It's just very specific and now longer and drawn out yeah. because you're literally um, you're literally cut open. Yeah. That's kind of the last thing I wanted to hit on is, okay, uh, many years ago, I kind of heard this little spiritual nudge and it was like, as hard as you are on your body, meaning not like hard on my body, but like, I love to play. Like for me, lifting or a into high intensity interval training, like it is like recess for me. It is so fun, right? And healthy in its own rights as long as it's not overdone as long yes. as i'm not injuring myself yes. and all of that and i'm being with my body and all of that but i heard as much as you go into those intensity levels you need to equally match that with proactive recovery if you're going to be living like that which looks not, like stretching right it's like not just not doing it mm -hmm. it also like if you're going to go to those extremes mm -hmm. you got to be more loving equal Correct. measure if not more right right and actually in that regard let's say you do that you I've got a 45 minute intense workout training. I'm like, great. That means you get that much stretching before and after. And I to plan that in, uh, you know, uh, and, it, and even if you can't do it like that, I'm like, great, just push it to before bed. So do it before you go to sleep. Right. You know, the, 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 it's that same essence. Um, everything about the body is opposites. Mm -hmm. Same, that principle right. is still alive. Totally. What you just said. So if you're going to push yourself to that extent, you have to care for yourself. You can't yeah. just say, oh, body will do good. I'm going right. to I'm gonna drink my wine, smoke my cigarette, and just pass out after watching some, I don't know, watching some reality show or whatever. Right. You know, again, if, if your body is, if you exert yourself heavily and then you just sit, right. you'll literally get stuck, stuck in that position. Stuck. And that's what you see in like the older bodybuilders. Correct. Right. You see guys in their 40s plus, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're just like, hey, raise your arm like this. And they're like, they can't. They can't, I got this. You can't even do like a regular 90-90 bend of like the I'm present teacher. Like yeah. <laughs> they can't, you know? And I saw that when I first became a yeah. trainer. I'm like, okay, let's have you like, you know, maybe just pull this band like that. They're stuck. Like can't even get their elbows to the sides of their body. That's the same thing. Like get stuck. But that's it's the same thing for this program. Like without those pecs opening up, without the scapula yep. coming together yep. and, and opening up that rib cage, the shoulder is actually in its most compromised position. Yep. So it, I learned it, that without posture, you break. Yep. It's that simple. Um, and, you know, again, if you want to get breast implants, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Just know what you're getting into. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of care. It, this is going to be like years of committed effort to take care of your body. Yeah. Not not just how it looks. Right. How it feels. Right. Otherwise, it will it will, it will fall and apart. You, especially if you're lifting. If you're lifting especially yes. and you have breast implants and you're not doing anything proactive like any of the stuff Sander just talked about, you are going to get injured. Per yes. Period. Straight forward. Any, <laughs> any elevation of, this, of the shoulders, any rotation forward of those same shoulders. Uh -huh. What about your head when your head kind of like conquers down? If there's any of that present and you want to lift something heavy, there is such a high percentage of you getting hurt. You are... You are you have a better chance of being struck by lightning if you didn't get hurt. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> You're just gonna and and I lived it and I experienced all that and it's been a lot. Like he said, like you are signing up for if you care about your biomechanics and the way your body operates and it's not having life. pain and not being injured, then just know I really wanted to do this for awareness for women because I don't see good information about this out there. And just know that you are also signing up for like pretty massive biomechanics rehab with yeah. consistent like i go into xander regularly i have another massage therapist that does more like the lomi lomi you know like uh, everyone's got their skill right I, and i but it's something that i prioritize for myself quite i mean i would anyway but this whole thing is like one of the biggest things that i constantly have to be on top of as a result so i just want to give women a heads up you know and if you are having uh you know shoulder injuries neck stuff going on in your breast implants hopefully this has been enlightening for you like you need to find a xander or you can fly her to the big island just hit yeah. me up i'll give you his contact yeah we got you but <laughs> <laughs> um and you know get that worked on do your stretching become aware right like 
do I even feel anything when I'm, you know, working my upper back? Like, what's going on? Can I stabilize my, do I feel my scapular? That's the first step. Right? Like, what's going on in there? Personal right. trainer challenge number one. Yeah. How to feel your body. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, you're We're very nice. welcome. Yeah. The, it's, it's, again, it's so prevalent that yeah. um, it, it's and it's and it's not actually difficult to do something about these are really right. simple things right. that directly are affected by your breathing so every time you take a breath you have a reminder are you taking care of yourself or are you ignoring yourself yeah all right yeah. love it thank you you have a blessed day